Hello and welcome back to your PA Dutch Minute. Today we continue on in our series of famous Pennsylvania Dutchmen and women. And today we're going to talk about someone that is known by every American, or at least should be known by every American, and I think a lot of Americans have no idea about his ethnic background, um, but that's President Dwight David Eisenhower. Um, and he has very strong Pennsylvania Dutch connection and Pennsylvania Dutch roots, and let's jump right into his story. So... The first ancestors of the Eisenhower family, spelled E-I-S-E-N-H-A-U-E-R, the original Germanic spelling, came to America uh, in the middle 1700s. The first guy was Hans Nicholas Eisenhower, and he left the town of Eiterbach in the Rhineland in southwestern Germany, just a little bit north east of Heidelberg, not too far from the same area where... Beisel, Conrad Beisel came from, and Conrad Weiser, this area where so many Pennsylvania Dutch can tra trace their roots. Anyway, um, Hans Nicholas came over in 1741. He brought his family, and they settled in present-day Bethel Township, Berks County, Pennsylvania. Uh, 1753, the family bought a 160-acre farm and started a large family. At this time, they were Mennonite by faith. Hans's son, John, one of his sons, John, grew up and moved his young family to Fredericksburg, Lebanon County, it's just a little bit west of where um, his parents' farm was, and joined the group known as the River Brethren, uh, which was a, an up-and-coming church there uh, among many German settlers. His son, who was a pastor, Pastor Jacob Eisenhower, and his family eventually then settled in the Likens Valley of southern Schuylkill County. It would be there in 1878 that he and many other river brethren decided to pack up things and move west, and he moved his family to Dickinson County, Kansas, and it would be in that time period where Jacob would change the spelling of their last name from the traditional H-A-U-E-R to how we as Americans know it today, H-O-W-E-R. Maybe, I guess, to make it more English or more anglicized, I would imagine would be the case. Eisenhower. It was pronounced the same way, though. Jacob's son, David, uh, didn't want to be a farmer. He went on to college, and it would be there that he met Ida Stover, another student, and eventually they married. David and his family moved even farther west to Denison, Texas in 1888, and it would be there on the 14th of October, 1890, that Dwight uh, would be born. So as mentioned, he's born in Texas in 1890, but his family then moved to Abilene, Kansas, and that would be where he grew up and would be considered his home. Um, Eisenhower was the third of seven sons. Uh, very early on, he excelled in sports, uh, particularly in high school, and through that and his intelligence, he received an appointment to West Point. Um, he would graduate West Point with honors, and after graduation, he would be stationed in Texas as a second lieutenant. It would be there that he would meet Mamie Dowd, who he would eventually marry in 1916. Uh, early on in his Army career, he excelled in staff assignments. He served under Generals John Pershing, Douglas MacArthur, Walter Kruger, and after Pearl Harbor, General George C. Marshall called him to Washington for a war plans assignment. It would be from that point on that he would become, of course, famous. He would be commanding, he would command the Allied forces in the landing in North Africa in November of 42, and he would be also, he would also become uh, the controlling leader for the invasion on D-Day in 1944 um, as we invaded France. One side note, when I was at the Eisenhower farm in, in Gettysburg, I heard this story. Early on in his military career, he, was, uh, he spent some time in the Gettysburg area training troops around the time of World War I. And what I found completely interesting about this story was that at that time period, the Gettysburg battlefield was, of course, owned by the United States government, but it wasn't necessarily um, viewed in the same light that it is today. In fact, Eisenhower trained troops using live artillery, artillery on the actual battlefield uh, in 1916 and 1917. I just thought that was a crazy side story to share with that. But anyway, uh, after the war... Um, he didn't, really have, he didn't really know what he was going to do, and Columbia University actually offered him the uh, job of president of the university. 
Uh, he took that job for a while, but then eventually the military called him home again, and he was offered the job as supreme commander over the new NATO forces that were being assembled in 1951. Um, it would be in the early 50s then that the Republican Party would come to him and ask him to run for president in 1952. They came up with the slogan, I like Ike, which was irresistible, and Eisenhower won a sweeping landslide victory in 1952. Um, early on in his presidency, in 55, he suffered a heart attack in, while in Colorado, and after seven weeks, uh, he left the hospital in February of 56. Doctors reported his complete recovery and it would be in November of that year that he would be elected for his second term as president. During his presidency, as far as domestic policy, um, Eisenhower pursued a middle course, continuing most of the New Deal and Fair Deal programs, even though he was Republican, emphasizing the, 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 a balanced budget. He also oversaw the desegregation of schools as that began. He did send troops into Little Rock, Arkansas to ensure the compliance with the, federal, with the orders of the federal court. He also ordered the complete desegregation of the armed forces. His quote was, there must be no secondary class citizen in this country. Under his presidency, we also saw the creation of the interstate highway system, which all of us use probably regularly. Um, during his presidency, he did concentrate on maintaining world peace, as we were at the height of the Cold War with the Soviets, and he watched with pleasure the development of his, quote, Adams for Peace program, the loan of American uranium to have-not nations for peaceful purposes. Before he left office in January of 1961 for his farm in Gettysburg, where he would spend his retirement, he urged the necessity of maintaining an adequate military strength, but cautioned that vast, long-continued military expenditures could breed potential dangers to our way of life. He concluded with a prayer for peace, quote, in the goodness of time, unquote. And both themes remained timely and urgent when he died after a long illness in March of 1969. He and his wife, Mamie, are buried at the Eisenhower Presidential Library in Abilene, Kansas. I would recommend, uh, if you haven't had the opportunity to tour the Eisenhower Farm at Gettysburg, it is really great. Um, it's right alongside of the battlefield, so you could do both. Um, the Eisenhower Farm and farmhouse is maintained exactly how it looked in, in the inside as Eisenhower and his wife Mamie were living there in the late 50s through the early into the early 60s till his death. Um, it's a really uh, awesome place to see. Um, I highly recommend it. It is run by the National Park Service now, um, and like I said, it's right next to uh, the Get Gettysburg Battlefield. So. Really important person in American history, Dwight David Eisenhower. Of course, we can't think about World War II or the 1950s without uh, thinking of Dwight Eisenhower. And very proud to say that he comes from good Pennsylvania Dutch roots, um, with ancestors actually making the trip over from the Palatinate, from the Rhineland, uh, in the middle 1700s. Uh, we don't know exactly when, which generation stopped speaking the dialect. I would imagine the, the generation that moved west probably would have dropped the dialect and when it all English. Of course, it makes sense with the change of the spelling of the name as well. Um, and just given the fact that they were moving out of Pennsylvania Dutch country. Um, but nonetheless, uh, absolutely, um, you know, a very important Pennsylvania Dutchman, even though he might not have grown up speaking the dialect, uh, I'm sure that there were traditions and customs in the Eisenhower household family growing up that he would have experienced that would have been holdovers from his Pennsylvania Dutch ancestors. So, a uh, quick history lesson on our president, Dwight David Eisenhower, and his Pennsylvania Dutch roots. Um, if you have an idea for a future video, of course, email me, my email address at the end, and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already done so. But until next time, Mox Good!